Just wing it. Probably not used to that phrase. You're probably more just do it. Well, I'm changing it a little bit. Rather than just do it, just wing it. Imagine if I said to Kurt, our organist today, or I said to him earlier this week, and I said, you know, Kurt, we don't have any hymns selected for this Sunday. We don't know what liturgy you're going to do. Just show up on Sunday morning, five minutes before the service. We'll figure it out. Let's just wing it. I don't know what the music would turn out, but Kurt's a tremendous player, so it probably would still be beautiful and glorious. We wouldn't have the stuff on the slides. And imagine if I took it even further, and anyone who was teaching for Sunday school, and I said to them, you know, don't practice it or prepare for it. Just wing it. And then imagine, say, the elders come up to me. And they say, Pastor, you've been preaching just fine. You know, no, no need to do all the sermon study anymore. No preparation for your sermon. Just go up there and sit on the stool and wing it. Some might be able to do just fine with winging it. But we are talking about presenting God's word here. And winging it is just not really a healthy option that I would suggest moving forward for church. Let's make this hit home a little closer. What if the government no longer required anyone to get a driver's license and say, Eh, let's just wing it and see what happens. Madison would be ready to drive. (laughs) Or what if, rather than looking up a treatment for a severe sunburn or some severe ailment and asking a medical professional their advice on how to treat it, you just wing it and put on, say, rubbing alcohol and baby powder on your sunburn. You know, a home remedy. Let's just wing it. It's not always wise to just wing it, is it? In fact, it can even be a pretty big detriment to what you're trying to do and accomplish. But isn't that exactly what Jesus was doing when he was sending out his disciples? Telling them to just just wing it. You know, you look at, the again, the first couple of verses for the gospel today. Jesus said to them, take nothing. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. We'll wear sandals, but not an extra tunic or extra shirt. And whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. What? He's sending them out to towns that they are unfamiliar with, never been to before. He's telling them to bring no money, no extra clothing. You think they'd get a little smelly? No food, a little hungry, and to just stay in a house with strangers, even if they don't know if they're going to get along with them or not. Just stay in that house, and they don't know that they're coming. But when they let you in, just just say, "Well, we're staying here for a week." Wow. Jesus is basically saying to the disciples, just wing it, isn't he? Sure seems like that. That'd be like me telling Stephanie, we're going on our vacation starting next Sunday, to Colorado and, I, and then on to Florida. And I would say, you know, we're moving to Florida, but eh, who cares what the movers say? We don't need to pack. We don't need to plan for a trip. You know, I'm not even going to look at the map. I'm just going to go on the road and see where it takes us. And we don't need no GPS We don't need to plan at all. We're going to be just fine. Let's just wing it. I don't think she would be too happy with me. (laughs) I don't know if I would have a residence to live in for the next year. And she knows me. (laughs) And I don't think she would be excited for the trip at all. But is that what Jesus is really saying Actually, no. Look at how the gospel begins and ends. It starts by Jesus calling the twelve, and then he sends them out two by two, giving them authority over evil spirits. 
That obviously didn't come from the disciples themselves. He gave them the authority over evil spirits. And then we get to the end of the section, and he tells the disciples, and he sends them out, and they go out and preach that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Jesus gave them power. Jesus gave them authority. He gave them his word to preach repentance. And he gave them power to heal out and drive out demons. They didn't need anything else. Jesus wasn't saying, just wing it. Rather, he was saying, just trust me. Last week, we look closely at how Jesus has equipped us with his word. And he has caused his word, he's caused the scriptures to stick in our soul. And now he's sending us out along with the disciples. Not to wing it, but to trust in him and to share the scriptures that he has stuck in us. This is the power that he has transferred to us and now he's transferring through us to others. Notice how the disciples respond to Jesus. They don't question his instructions. What do they do? They go. They just go. They might be wondering how in the world this is all going to happen and how they might accomplish the journey with so little. But they still go. And Jesus even hints that they might not be received in some homes or places, but they still go. I know if I were in that same position as those disciples, there would be many thoughts going through my head. Many thoughts of questions, many thoughts of, but Jesus, do you really think I can do this? But Jesus, I need my GPS to get me where you want me to go, or at least a map. But, but Jesus, my, my family doesn't know I'm leaving yet, so I need to go and say goodbye to them. But, but what am I going to say to these people? I, I don't know them, and you're sending me to them. How am I going to even strike up a conversation? But I'm not prepared for this, Jesus. I've never done this before. You haven't trained me for this, but... I know I'm not good at this. I'm not going to be good at this at all, Jesus. But what about food and water? But, but, but. Notice that none of the disciples came up with an excuse. In fact, before they can even come up with an excuse or at least blurt it out, what does Jesus do? He simply tells them that the, all they need is themselves, a staff, a pair of sandals, one outfit, and their partner. And then go. Talk about stepping out in faith. Jesus was saying, rest assured and rely only on me. So why do we have all the excuses? All the buts. Is it because we are scared? Is it because of the fear of the unknown that we don't know what's going to happen? Because you know, Jesus has called us and is sending us out just like he did the disciples. Jesus has sent us out into the mission fields among us. He has sent us out into our own neighborhoods, into our own cities, into our own workplaces, into our own neighborhoods. These are the places that we are to witness Jesus' name. And here's where we insert our excuses, why it's just not that easy. Do you hear those voices in your head? Pastor Cares is crazy. He doesn't know how my neighbor is going to react. I don't want people to think that I'm a Jesus freak, so they already think I'm crazy enough. Jesus was sending out his disciples in his day, but the times today are very different from then. Really? Really? 
The times in Jesus' day were pretty hostile to a new message. And Jesus sent out his disciples into that hostile world. His closest followers he sent out into that hostile world. Maybe your excuse right now is, why invite somebody to Bible study or to church? We won't have a full-time pastor maybe for a while. There's no point in inviting somebody to church that doesn't have a pastor. It's just not going to be the same. Remember that the church is not about the pastor, but it is about the congregation. And it's about the message that they preach. This congregation preaches Christ crucified with or without me. I could not imagine a better congregation for anyone to invite someone to be a part of than Shepherd of the Plains. Dear friends, Jesus isn't sending you out alone. He's sending you out without all your comforts and extra things so that they're not a distraction for you. What he is saying is, I am with you, and you need not rely on anything else, especially those comforts, because once you have those comforts and you're relying on them, you forget about me. I am sufficient, Jesus says, and I will work through you. Remember the scriptures that I've stuck in your heart, your soul from young on, Jesus says? I will use those through you. The only power that we have ourselves is the power to come up with excuses and to reject trusting in God's power alone. You are a disciple of Christ. You don't need your power. All you need is Christ's power. It is through his power that he saved you It is through his power that he has given you rest. And now it is through his power that he is using you to bring that same rest to others. Rest assured, disciples of Christ. Jesus is with you. Jesus is in you through the Holy Spirit. The rest that he has won for you on the cross is the rest that he is waiting for us in heaven. But the peace of knowing that Jesus has won that eternal rest for us continues to reside in you right now at this moment and it will guard your hearts and minds here on this earth. The disciples, they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and they healed many sick people. The disciples were able to do this, not because of themselves, but because Jesus gave them the authority. As I look out at all of you, I see fear, I see sadness, but there's also excitement. I see confusion. I see revelation. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has given you the authority right here in his word. He has given you the power to reach out to others with this word. Jesus gave his disciples that day the special power to drive out demons and to heal the sick. That power was all from God. When you go out, do not think about your inadequacies and all the excuses why you shouldn't go and talk to someone. Go out confident that Jesus has the power. Go out relying on the forgiveness that Jesus has already won for you. And take that forgiveness out to others so that others may be healed and saved by it. You're not magically going to go out there and heal anyone. 
but you're going out there with the healing power of Jesus and his word to save souls. You're going out so that many more may rest on his forgiveness. In a sense, when you go out and to witness, you're just winging it. But it really is much more than that, isn't it? When you go out, you're placing all of your trust in Jesus. When you go out, you're going out as a disciple of Christ with the authority that Christ has given you. Bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus, cleansed by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the resurrected Lord. You are going out confident, courageous, and Christ-centered. For it is Christ and his power that is all that you need. Go out, dear friends, as missionaries for Christ. Jesus is standing by your side. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.